right, folks. Thanks very much for joining our uh, Monday Mindshare this week. And uh, awesome to see the racing going on around the world and some of the results. We had uh, Ironman Texas this weekend here in the U.S. And uh, there's racing going on, of course, still in the Southern Hemisphere, still uh, in the warmer part of autumn uh, down there. This week, I did want to talk about the lead into racing, race week, and some of the nutrition that can support readiness for race day. And uh, we've seen this done well at times, and sometimes we're surprised at the uh, lack of consistency on race day results, um, only to find out when we get into the race that we're just losing the punch that we thought we had and the readiness we thought we had for the race. And uh, what are some of the reasons behind that? I particularly want to talk about the role of protein and particularly glutamine in priming for race day and most specifically replenishing liver and muscle glycogen stores uh, and doing that without over-consuming sugars and thereby blunting fat oxidation. So we're going to talk about what nutrition really helps to do that well. Um, you know, one of the common ingredients across our training products our racing product and our recovery product is glutamine. And it's an amino acid. We, we've we talked a lot about that over time on its role with respect to gut health and endurance exercise. Um, glutamine is an amino acid that actually is an energy fuel for the gut uh, membrane cells, the enterocytes. This is what they feed on for energy. Even the immune cells feed on glutamine for energy. But glutamine also is interesting as an amino acid in that it can come into the mitochondria in the muscle cell and it can be metabolized there in the same way that glucose is metabolized to produce energy. So it is it's a really interesting amino acid. Now, in 2019 there was a a paper done that looked at 55 studies around glutamine. So quite an extensive assessment of different findings from different research around the world on the use of glutamine, specifically in the role of um, addressing fatigue from uh, notably uh, endurance exercise, but also multiple types of exercise, you know, including more high intensity, shorter duration type exercise, basketball, rugby, et cetera. But a lot of the studies in the 55 studies were specific to more endurance type or like exercise. So there were several conclusions at the end of all of this. And uh, I wanted to share with this with you and then bring it back to how do you apply that to help you uh, with respect to race week and ensuring that you're fully primed as best possible in terms of liver and muscle glycogen stores. Now, as I said, you know, there's two ways, of course, there's multiple ways really, but the prime way, of course, that most people are conscious of in terms of, you know, topping up, if you will, the liver and the muscle cells with glycogen is, of course, the consumption of carbohydrate. The negative and downside of that, if you take too much or if it's of a more, um, you know, uh, I would say simplified format of sugar or carbohydrate, it will trigger insulin and uh, the, either having too much or taking too much of the simplified form of carbohydrate will then through this triggering of insulin have quite a detrimental effect to fat oxidation. Now, interestingly enough, Glutamine, on the other hand, can also dramatically increase muscle glycogen synthesis. Uh, and I'll talk about some of the other things it can do in a second. But it uh, does that. But uh, there's a number of studies that also show that glutamine actually heightens fat oxidation. So this is very interesting because as we think about race week and we're trying to you know, improve those glycogen stores, top them up and make sure that we hit the starting line set up well in terms of having glycogen levels restored well. Glutamine may be an interesting uh, compound to take more of in that race week to help do this without overly taxing and stimulating insulin release so that our fat oxidation is still well-primed 
uh, for the race also. Now, interestingly enough, glutamine also reduces ammonia. And of course, ammonia is something that is produced with exercise and particularly the intensity of exercise. It is one of the reasons that we're, you know, when we think about fatiguing in the muscle and having either strength or range of movement or what have you, ammonia is one of those compounds, of course, that it's thought to contribute to that. And glutamine reduces that accumulation of ammonia, these studies would suggest. Now, one of the things they've found in these studies that's more consistent is that it's not really about the acute intake, meaning that you take it today and it's all well by this afternoon. Uh, but the the functionality of glutamine requires some consistent consumption. And they talk in these studies when they look across them about you know, more than a five-day period. So my first guidance would be when we're thinking about prepping for race day in that race week, think about at least the full seven day, if not maybe a two week period where every day you're taking some glutamine. And I'll talk about where it's most intense in the S-Fuels products in terms of dosage of where it's highest. Um, there's other aspects of glut glutamine that make it really interesting as we think about priming the body for a race and making sure that we're fully recovered from the various training loads and blocks coming into race week and race day. Some of the markers associated with muscle damage from exercise, like creatine kinase, these are uh, classic biomarkers that you would test for in trying to assess for the amount of muscle tissue damage. And there are other ones also, but CK or cre cre creatine uh, kinase is one of those clear markers. And it would seem that Glutamine has this ability to attenuate, uh, which means like to, if you will, dial down the amount of leakage of creatine kinase from damaged muscle tissue. Um, now, these effects of glutamine on, you know, increasing muscle glycogen synthesis and reducing ammonia, ammonia and then dialing down some of this uh, muscle damage biomarkers, um, this is most seen or most pronounced in exhaustive and prolonged or like endurance exercise, less so in short run, short duration, uh, high intensity exercise. So let's just talk now about quickly how you can then apply this in a functional sense. You know, if you look at a lot of these studies, you probably want to be taking like, you know, five to 10 grams of this a day in that, you know, seven to 10 day period prior to race day. So we've talked, as I said, in our revival product where it really is glutamine, beta hydroxybutyrate or ketones and whey protein isolate are the three major components of the revival S fuels recovery product. And the amount of glutamine that we dose in revival is five grams. So it's quite a high clinical dose. Uh, the amount of glutamine we have in our train and racing products is it's there in every product, but it's a much lower dose. Uh, so what you really want to be doing is in that seven to 10 days before race day is really dialing up a daily uh, dose of the revival product, whether that's in a chocolate shake or however you have it, um, to really prime the muscle glycogen levels without overly stimulating, um, you know, through consumption of uh, carbohydrate, overstimulating uh, insulin. So I hope this helps in setting you up for a great race day and making it a little more consistent and predictable and hitting the starting line with a well topped up level in both the liver and the muscle cells of glycogen. This doesn't take away from efficient fat oxidation, but helps you to ensure, like we say, is burn the right fuel at the right time, allow you to churn through the largest of endurance races, both on fat and carbohydrate. Till next time, thanks uh, again. Have uh, a great week and all the best in racing around the world. If there's any questions, send it our way. We're happy to help. Thanks again for joining Coach.